Hey everybody, welcome back. So today's Friday and Friday Facts number 374 just dropped, which is Smarter Robots. I have not yet done a video on the expansion. I still am kind of going through the whole post to understand that. So we're going to get into this one and just go through what was covered and what to expect and when to expect it. So basically the backstory on this is, is that robots, uh, bots are awesome. They are a lot of fun to use for bigger bases. They are quite challenging to get to behave right. They have problems with concave bases or bases with big holes in them, you know, for over water, anything like that. They have issues where if you have bots that are spread out over a very large area, say a thousand of them, and you tell your bot network to deconstruct a thousand trees or something like that, you will wait for the f bots furthest away from you to come and help complete that job, even though the ones that are nearby could probably do it in a fraction of the time or definitely could do it in a fraction of the time. And as Friday Facts 374 gets into, the reason for that is, is because they basically just keep a list of idle robots in memory at any given time, which is very efficient in terms of both space and computation because all you have to do is have that list ready to go it's not expensive to maintain you don't have to go and inspect every bot as to what they're doing but the downside is is that you don't utilize bots that are closer necessarily better than ones that are further away to the to the work especially because and this is the other part of what this friday facts gets into bots can only have one job at a time today in Factorio 1.x, right? And so once they get assigned that job, if you have to deconstruct a thousand trees, even if there's a bot right next to those trees, they're not going to be able to come back and do more trees for you, even though it's going to take considerably longer for bots to come in from further away and deconstruct the trees. And this applies to logistics bots as well. I kind of did the inverse of what the post describes. They go through Logi bots first, and then they talk about construction bots. To me, construction bots are the easier ones to understand, uh, just because it, all the time it happens when you're you're waiting for bots to come and do their thing when you slap down a blueprint. So the way the changes for Factorio 2 work, and that I believe is the release that's going to coincide with the expansion drop, which is now slated for 2024. And hey, if you watch my long plays, you know that I called that. I said, I don't think it's coming this year. I knew it. It's a common theme in the software industry. It doesn't matter, games, not games. Dev is hard. Adding more devs doesn't necessarily make things go faster. And in fact, it can often make it go slower. So the way that the devs intend to address some of these problems, as I understand it from this Friday Facts post, is instead of just tracking what bots are idle and sitting in a robo-port at any given time, for all bots, they're going to track when they're going to finish their current job, where they will be when they finish it, and the bots will have a queue of jobs instead of just one job at any given time. Now that's a number of really big improvements and you might wonder, is that gonna impact performance? And the answer is, of course it is. But the real question is, will it impact it appreciably? Going from one job to a queue of jobs is not necessarily a big deal. Factorio, from every measure I'm aware, is not well known for consuming a ton of memory, at least even for megabases, memory doesn't seem to be as much the bottleneck. Memory transfer speed between memory and the CPU is certainly one of the biggest that determines performance for larger scale bases and saves. But realistically, I think we're talking about kilobytes to maybe a couple megabytes worth of memory consumption in terms of storing those queues. In terms of storing the information about where a bot will complete its current task and when those are very simple small pieces of data that can again easily be stored in memory without 
exponentially higher requirements. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal on the memory consumption side. On the UPS side, of course, it's going to take more computation to figure out, to, to maintain those cues, to do the calculations of where am I going to be as a bot when I finish a job? How long is it going to be from now? And to, to constantly be maintaining that. But if there's one thing that the Factorio devs seem to be good at, it's optimizing the absolute heck out of code. I am blown away at the performance that they managed to get on the Nintendo Switch, which is a very not capable platform compared to pretty much every other platform. <laughs> I mean, I think, what else is Factorio on? I, I'm only aware of PC. I don't know if it's on anything else, but uh, it's really amazing that they were able to get just vanilla Factorio to be playable on Switch. That blows me away. I did not expect that they would be able to do that. So my prediction is performance is not going to be appreciably impacted. I, this is not a ton more data. It definitely is going to take a long time to develop and implement efficiently. I guarantee you that. That's kind of been the name of the game with this dev team since they started working on this game is they take longer to do it right and you end up with bulletproof code that never crashes that is super efficient and manages somehow to bottleneck on memory transfer speeds to the cpu and if you're wondering what i'm talking about there you should look into how the best cpus currently to run factorio on at least as of my last check are the x3d series of processors from amd which have very large caches on the actual CPU, which allow for, especially for smaller bases, massively reducing the amount of transfer that needs to occur to and from RAM. So another thing that's being added in Factorio 2.0 that I am so excited about and I complained about and asked for earlier this week is on individual RoboPorts, you can set logistics requests to make that RoboPort want to store a minimum number of robots in it at any given time. So when logistics bots, construction bots finish their jobs, they won't all just cluster at the nearest RoboPort with space. You'll be able to say, I want 100 bots in each RoboPort. Now, I don't know what the tie-breaking looks like on that because I don't really know what you would want to do if... You only have 50 bots in the network and you have four robo ports each requesting 50 bots. Obviously, I, ideally, I think you'd want to put 12 in each robo port in that example. And there'd be some leftovers right from the remainder. But I don't know. I haven't really thought that through in terms of what that would take to implement yet. So I don't know if that's how they're going to do it. We'll see. Hopefully it gets evenly balanced like that. That'd be even more amazing. But just having the ability to effectively, even if it went 50 into one robo port and then anything past that will go into one of the other ones instead of just loading up the nearest robo port with all of your bots, that would be amazing. That's a huge improvement over what there is today. So moving on, another thing that's been improved with bots is that the way that they select what robo port to charge at has been improved significantly. What they will do now is they will inspect the number of bots that are already on their way to a given robo port and try to spread that out and balance it again this is something that doesn't take a great deal of space to store so i don't expect any big performance impacts from that it just seems like a very slightly improved heuristic that makes a big difference and from the gif that is in the friday facts it's pretty compelling you can see that there's a big improvement from the old heuristic to the new and to the finishing top piece of this entire Friday Facts for me is that they have made improvements that will allow robots to cross lakes better. And the way that they've done that is instead of just when a robot runs out of charge and it needs to recharge, instead of going to the nearest robot port, which if it can't get halfway across the body of water or whatever, it that will cause an endless loop of the bot going back and back to the same robo port over and over again to charge. Now they select a robo port that is closer to their destination. They will prefer robo ports that are closer to their destination. And as you can see in this video on the Friday facts here, 
they also are using that other heuristic that we just mentioned. So they're not all trying to clump up on the robo ports that are right at their destination. Some of them are losing that sort of voting or whatever of who gets to go to which robo port and they're going to a nice compromise that still will help them get to their destination ultimately and not jam up all the robo ports with charging, which I think is amazing. So all in all, I am beyond excited about this Friday Facts. I'm so glad that they're doing Friday Facts again. I'm so glad that we're getting improvements to bots. None of these things are possible with mods today from what I understand. So we're not going to see it for a while. The release has been pushed back to 2024. But just like my perspective was when the price went from 30 to $35 USD, if you want quality software, it costs money and it takes time. It's the end of the story. There's no way around that. I am, I happen to be personally very familiar with that concept and I am more than happy to wait for these guys to do it right. I, this team has a track record of delivering amazing code. This is one of the most amazing games I've ever seen. So I know they're going to hit it out of the park when it comes to the expansion and all the quality of life improvements that you're going to get for free. Cause from what I understand, they, none of that is going to be locked behind the expansion. You're, you're just getting that right. Even if you own Factorio today, this is something that you get in that patch. You just won't get the space age content unless you also buy the uh, DLC. Although to me, it's feels wrong to call it a DLC. It's, it's an expansion. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you found this video informative, enjoyed it, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Any of those things mean a lot to me. They help the channel a lot. You can also join our Discord or check out my other videos. There's lots of me getting angry at bots and shooting them down in frustration when they fail to comply with my demands and whims. You can get a more hands-on perspective on how the shortcomings of bots today inflict pain on us. Otherwise, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day. See you next time, everybody. Bye.